This video is about derived and base SI units. In physics there are seven units that we call our base units. The unit for length is the meter with the symbol m. The unit for mass is the kilogram with the symbol kg. The unit for time is the second with the symbol s. The unit for current is the ampere with the symbol a. Now there are three others here that are listed. The unit for temperature, the Kelvin, with the symbol K. The unit for the amount of a substance, the mole, with the symbol mol. And the unit for luminous intensity, symbol is CD. The unit is the candela. In this video, we are only going to work with the first four of these. And if you can master the first four, then you can apply that to the other units that were listed. Now the reason why these are base units is because it's impossible to describe one of these quantities in terms of the others. For example, if I ask you to measure the length of something, you can't then express that length as a combination of kilograms, seconds, amperes and so on. But you can express that length in metres or any unit similar to that, centimetres, kilometres and so on. So any length, for example a height, can be expressed in metres. But what about an area? Well, an area of a shape, for example, a rectangle, is uh, calculated by multiplying two lengths together. In this case, x multiplied by y. Well, in this case, let's say x is two metres and y is three metres. Then when we multiply those numbers together, we can see that's six, but the metres are also multiplied together. So 2 metres multiplied by 3 metres is 2 times metres times 3 times metres, which is 6 square metres. So metres squared, or square metres, is the unit for area. It is a derived unit, and it is determined by combining the base units. In this case, we don't need amperes, seconds, or kilograms. So we could express this unit like this. And although we probably wouldn't, this is perfectly correct. Remember, anything raised to a power of zero is just equal to one. Now, any quantity can be expressed with a unit that is a string of the seven base units and some power. Each of the units has a power, and those that we're not interested in have a power of zero. So a speed can be calculated as some distance divided by some amount of time. Well, let's pick some numbers. Let's express our distance in base SI units as 10 metres and our time in base SI units as 2 seconds. Now, we wouldn't usually put the multiplication sign between the number and the unit, but it is perfectly correct to do so. So 10 multiplied by metres divided by 2 and divided by seconds as well, that's also on the denominator of this fraction. And in A-level physics, we would commonly represent that as 5 metres per second, where the second has a power of negative 1. But I could just as correctly present it like this. Of course, I wouldn't, because it's not very clear what we're doing. But for the purpose of this exercise, it's a good thing to do because we can see clearly that the derived SI unit has parts of the base SI units within it. Now the steps that I took to decide what those powers were, I started by writing the simplest equation I could think of for a quantity. So if I were asked what the derived SI unit was for speed, I chose a very simple equation for speed. I was then able to substitute the units for the parts of that equation to determine what the unit is of speed in SI base units. Let us look at acceleration. So acceleration can be calculated as a difference in velocity divided by time. Well, the difference in velocity is still a velocity. 5 meters per second minus 2 meters per second is 3 meters per second. And I'm going to use square brackets to indicate that I'm using units in here. So my unit for velocity was meters seconds to the minus one. We already determined that before. My acceleration is a velocity divided by a time. So that's going to be divided by seconds. What I'm hoping you can see is that this unit becomes meters seconds to the minus two. 
And again here, we could express that with kilogram to the zero and ampere to the zero, but we're not going to for clarity. If I want to know what the derived SI unit is for force, I need to think of the simplest equation I know for force, which maybe is F equals MA. Well, in F equals MA, we have the unit for mass, which is the kilogram, and we multiply that by the unit for acceleration, which I just worked out before, meters per square second. And so that is the SI derived unit for force. In fact, one newton is one kilogram meter per square second. Examiners love to ask questions like this using much more complicated units, but the steps are always the same. Choose an equation that you know, substitute units instead of symbols, and then combine them and see what you get.